Hello, and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and we're very glad you're joining us again today. Today, we're going to have another very interesting show. We have with us from the West Coast, Christopher Howard. Chris is a rising star on the scene of motivation speaking and inspiring people wherever he goes, and he's going around the world these days speaking to people about getting in touch with their own power, with their own souls, really, and their own wish to essentially be great and be successful and be wealthy on every single level possible. So Chris is going to be in New York very soon and we'll give you the information, giving some talks and workshops and you'll have a chance to see and experience Chris yourself directly in that setting and get kind of a taste of his work and his intelligence and wit today on A Better World. So thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Mitch. Absolutely. Good to see you. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, it's really a pleasure to be back in New York. Like yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Is this a great place or what? you got a wonderful city. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's why they wanted to bomb it. Yes, <laughs> they really exactly, wanted yeah. to come and play. <laughs> it's too nice. Didn't know how. <laughs> yeah, right, too nice. <laughs> um, Chris, what is it that got you initially motivated into doing this in the first place, this kind of work with people? Well, I, you know, I think I've, I've always been interested in personal development. I mean, ever since I was a, a kid, I remember... Uh, I did my first transcendental meditation class when I was nine. Uh, nine? Yeah, nine years old, yeah. I took my first... Uh, took Maharishi my first... didn't start meditating at that point. Really? Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> I don't think so. I <laughs> uh, took my first hypnosis class when I was 12. Um, bought my first... This is a funny story. I bought my first book on memory enhancement when I was 10 years old, but I forgot it on the school bus. And it was pretty embarrassing because I had to call them up and say, I forgot this book on the school bus. And they said, what's it called? And I said, well, how to improve your memory. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've always been into it. Uh, right, right, right. But I took a, a hiatus. I, I worked in the hotel resort industry for several years. Mm -hmm. um, and I hit, a, I hit a point in my life, I was about 26 years old, I had been working out of the country and I came back. And I hit a point where things weren't working for me physically, emotionally, uh, financially certainly weren't working. I was about $70,000 in debt, really, mm. uh, really behind. And I had no upside to, to offset that. So it was a, a pretty stuck, stuck place. And so I poured into the personal development books out of desperation more mm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, Did you find they helped you? Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, I started to turn things around immediately, started to make my life more the way I wanted. Um, for me, what, where I got um, the truest application of, the, of and the, the truest, the truest um, sign of the validity of the tools was when I was able to take that 70000 in about a less than, it's about about two and a half year time frame, I started making $70,000 a month. So I went from $70,000 in debt oh, to making 70000 a month, and then it rose after that, continued to rise uh, up to 200000 a month, and it just kept going and going oh, and going my. to direct application of everything that I've been learning. So, mm, uh, very interesting. so the financial upside was, was really good for me, but for me, it's, it's, it's all about the life that I'm living now. I, I truly love my life, and things are far beyond where they ever would have been before. And so... I'm a, I'm a big proponent for the tools. Very interesting. You know, I want to make note of something um, that is, as I understand from you, you did not go to college. Is that correct? Never went to college. Never yeah. went to college. Okay. I, yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing to model, right. you know, right. because um, I have gone to school for, you know, a good, you know, almost half of my life or more. Right. And, um, and I am a great proponent of school and formal education and, sure. all, and all of that. Right. At the same time, I see numerous and increasing instances of people who have not gone to college or graduate school or the like and right. are doing just magnificently in the world, right. succeeding and they're bright and they're self-educated. Right. And I actually did grow up, even though I grew up in this like a fancy town in Connecticut and all of this, there were some of my friends there who never graduated college either and they're utterly brilliant and successful in the world. Right. So I just wanted to make note of that for people that they see that you know, you can go to college and play that game and do well and sure. succeed and have those credentials, or you can and still have an utterly glorious life and actually have a little bit more time to study what you want. Yeah, and for me, would it was you make a, a comment about this? Yeah, absolutely. For me, it's it's about focus. Um, if you look at some of the most successful people in worldly terms, because success comes in many shades and flavors and, and colors. But if you look from a financial perspective, the, the people that are massively successful have, have been able to channel their focus in a, in a direction that allowed that success to, to, to come to fruition. Um, Warren Buffett, who's the second richest man in the world, uh, a, a very kind-hearted man as well, once I really started studying him, he's going to give away all of his wealth at the end of his life uh, back to society. He says society's, society's been, to a large extent, um, 
that which has created the wealth. So why not give it back to where it belongs, sure. which is pretty cool. Really, very much. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I, I like that. And um, one of the things that he's been really a master of is channeling his focus. And for me, education was all right, but there were a lot of things that I had to study that weren't really of interest to me or weren't going to take me further in the direction that I wanted. I'm a big proponent of education, but I've always been a proponent of directionalized education. So um, I think I educate myself more than most people. I'm constantly yeah. reading. I'm a voracious reader. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of books on just on, on personal development, spiritual development, all of that. Um, so, but it's a channeled and focused energy that's allowed me to take leaps forward. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I think however one educates oneself, it's, it's, it's vital. And I do believe in formal education as well because it's, it's kind of like religion. A lot of people would like religion to tell them how to live their lives rather than figuring it out themselves. But we know that both through religion or spirituality, we can find a path to, to, to a similar place. Exactly. It provides, in each case, a structure by which people can improve themselves, grow themselves, but ultimately we're growing ourselves. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's it's our a, bottom how line. How do you do it? How do you right. do it? How do you do yeah. it? So how did you go? I mean, anyone watching would want to know, how did you go from 70,000? We know how you got into debt. Right. I mean, yeah. You could figure that part out. <laughs> really? Right. I, don't, I, need to, I don't need to tell people how to do that. Right. No, okay. no. You don't give classes on that. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> but how did you go from... I was pretty from, good, though. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. How did you go from that into 70000 a month and then onward? How did yeah. that happen? Um, well, there was some exciting things. That, you know, I had been to all the seminars. I'd, uh, I, I had done the Anthony Robbins and the, mm -hmm. and the Robert Kiyosaki, and I read all the books. You know, I awakened the giant within, but when I woke him up, he was still grumpy. We weren't any further along in our life, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I did NLP rather massively. Yeah, I became, I, well, I became a trainer and... of, of neuro-linguistic programming and clinical hypnosis, and I was actually wow. teaching, um, teaching courses in accelerated human change and teaching courses in communication um, around, mainly around uh, the United States as well as Canada. And so I was teaching courses in, in how, to, how to make change quickly, um, how to communicate more effectively. Uh, but I knew there was still the scotoma in my own life. It was a blind spot, an area I didn't look at. And that was my finances. And it was just because, quite frankly, it wasn't an area of interest to me before that. I, mm. I always thought, well, I'm going to work, I'm going to do what I love, and that's all that matters. And I don't really care all that much about money. I mean, that's kind of my mindset. And as a result, I didn't have any. Um, so it, it, it wasn't a secret why I didn't have any, but you know, some of us beat our heads up against the wall trying to figure it out, but it's pretty clear if you look at it. You know, mm -hmm. it's where do you place value? Where do you place importance? And, and um, how do you language your life? Basically? And how do you language your life? And so I was, doing, I was, I was succeeding at a bigger level. I was actually doing about $70,000 a year at that point. So I was 70 in debt, making 70 a year. Mm -hmm. And I, I stopped one day and I said, you know, I'm going to start applying everything that I know and I'm going to do psychological profiles on people that have succeeded massively. And so I started breaking down the mindsets of the super wealthy, and within that two-year time frame, after I did that, and I actually installed the beliefs, the values inside myself, I found a mentor who could help me close the gap between where I was and where I wanted to be, mm. and we turned it around just like that. And we were doing 70000 a month within two years, and um, today, I mean, we're way beyond that. So it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to take yeah. an area where you don't feel like you have complete control and to totally take charge and design your life the way you want. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Well, what were the methods by which? I mean, you said you installed belief systems, for instance. Right. What does that mean? Well, it means really going inside. And I, there's various techniques and tools that I teach in the various programs that I, that I uh, present uh, for doing that, for actually installing a belief. But the first step is to get the beliefs that you're going to install. Because many people are walking around in life and they've made decisions about life. And our, our decisions determine our destiny. So people have made decisions that they can't make a lot of money or that money and happiness don't go hand in hand. Or, or that money you, is bad and evil. Money is bad and evil. The root of all evil. The root of all evil. Or you can't be spiritual and have wealth. I mean, all these things that, you know, that get in people's way. Limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs. Einstein said that we're boxed in by the boundary conditions of our thinking. And that, for me, those are those barriers. Those are the boundaries that people... Sure. Uh, Bang their heads up against, and and I had I myself, you know, I didn't I didn't think that money should be important. I thought it should be about other things, and well, it should. But I mean, when I started modeling these people and looking at them, I realized that very few. I mean, if you look at the billionaires in the world, money they will very rarely tell you that money is the most important thing to them. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Donald Trump's father told him when he was a young kid, when he was 16 years old, told him that if you if you do it for the money, you're doing it for the wrong reason. He said, you'll never stick with it long enough to be truly financially successful. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be something way beyond that. Yeah. And so, uh, so what, but what I was doing is I thought that it had to be just about that in order to make it. When I really got that, no, it could be about a grander vision. We got a big vision for the planet. I mean, we got good things we want to do in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it can be about that bigger vision, but you also have to place a level of importance on the financial side. Otherwise, you know, how are you going to how are you going to spread your messages to as many people as you as you can? You look how much Bill Gates is giving back right now. You look at how much. Uh, I mean, millions and millions and millions, and then most people look back at how much they're giving back, and they go, oh, wow, maybe, maybe I could do something more if I was to uh, take my life to a new level. And that's, and that's what we were essentially doing with our companies. Well, it's in, you raise a very important point, really, Chris, that is when people are not responsible for their own finances, they're actually costing society rather than giving to society. Oh, absolutely. And I if, like that. You know, yeah. No, well put. Yeah. And if you want to be spiritual, so to speak, in this life, one of your responsibilities is actually to earn a good amount of money so that you can, one, be sustained by self-sustaining and give back. Absolutely. How can you give something that you just don't have? It's the old paradigm. Yeah, you you gotta, it's like put your own oxygen mask on first. Yeah, and then, exactly. Yeah, help the, uh, exactly, the infant. Yeah, That's absolutely. Right. And I see... So, um, I mean, it's we a had, spiritual obligation, therefore, to make money. Not to ignore it. I like it. It's like a total inversion of the usual thinking. Right. Well, when yeah. they say that money is the root of all evil, no, the love of money. If you place money above all else, exactly. then, then I can see how your life exactly. might not be all that. But you've got to at least have it in there. It's like the foundation of your house. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you, you, there's certain things that need to be in place, yeah. and I, I see money as being one of those things. And I, I know that a lot of people have issues about it. That's why I, I talk about it. But sure. Sure. Um, I part for me. There's a. There's a. Uh, you talk about a lot of things, really, though. I, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I mean, you talk about the idea of wealth, for instance, in spiritual wealth, spiritual wealth, on emotional wealth. That you know, you have friends and family and love abundantly in one's life. And what do you see as the issue? Because now, at this point, uh, you're doing a lot of traveling and doing yeah. your seminars everywhere in Australia and across the world. What I think there are probably some fundamental issues that people are experiencing at this point in our history. What, sure. What, speak to those if you would. I'd well, be interested to know what is I, showing up. I think um, there's, there's shifts that occur in value systems with, the, uh, with, with people in the world, through societies, through individuals. Uh, and, and we'll go through this on an individual basis, but also the entire, entire countries will shift through, uh, will have value shifts. Yeah. And inherent within those value shifts are issues for each, each, each level. Uh, that somebody would go through. Um, what I what I mean is is that like you have times where you look at the 60s when people came in the in the 60s there was a whole revolution that was occurring within our country from a values perspective where we had you know people were saying no oh, let's let's live in the moment let's peace be here love. now peace and love <laughs> now which is which is a which is a nice state to be in yeah. but that's going to have its own inherent challenges. Uh, for example, if somebody has an inward spiritual quest. Um, they might not ever tap into creating things in the real world, and therefore they may, might, oftentimes you hear about spiritual people that live in lack. Not always, but oftentimes that can be an issue where they're not going out and creating things in the material world. Then you get the people in the material world that go out and, and the pursuit of material goods that at the end of their life sometimes will find themselves with a hole in their soul because they never found out who they sure. were in relationship to the world. Those are two major issues. Um, Einstein also said that the, the significant problems that we face can't be solved at the level of thinking we were at when we created them. And so each one is a response to the previous. Whenever we have a shift from a value system, like in the old days, in the old in the industrial age, where you had, where people were learning to, you know, sit down, be a good worker bee, and kind of sit in the workplace, and that had its own issues. A worker bee. A worker bee. <laughs> yeah, that had that, that values that whole thought, system of thought had its own issues, and there's still, I mean, that's how we're still essentially training people in this country in the school systems. Uh, that's why we have uh, the poverty levels that we do is because people yeah. are learning, you know, they're learning to just sit down, shut up, and be quiet. And yeah. so I think there's, there's some issues in the school systems. But there's an issue with that value system as well, which is people don't feel like they can really step outside of the black and white thinking of the way things should be, they ought to be, and what they're told to do. And so each one of those values well, the shifts. inherited the inherited belief systems. Yeah, the inherited belief systems generation to generation. imposed on them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So... So the, each one has its own issues. Some people feel like they can't really go out and, and make it. Some people don't know how to go out and make it. Some people don't know how to design their life the way they want. But if you look at the world right now, especially in the United States, if you, one, one out of four people is living below the poverty level. 65% mm. um, of people will never be financially independent. Uh, I'm sorry, 80% of people will never be financially independent. What the study said was that 65, by the age of 65, most people will either not, no longer be with us or be uh, dead broke. Mm. So. 
when I look at those statistics, I think that's just staggering. And it's like, I feel like I've got a mission to help people to realize, yeah, yeah, you can be, do, have, and create all that you want. You can be totally fulfilled in life, and you can, you can make a financial, uh, you can have your life together financially. Yes, right, right, right. What, uh, just curious about, what are the issues do you feel people on a personal level are dealing with as you travel around and they are coming face to face with what you're teaching and showing them? Right. What are sort of uh, the comments they're making about what's in their way? Well, um, there's, there's so many common things. I mean, for, a lot of it will be those limiting beliefs that get in people's way when right. they made a decision about life. I have low self-esteem, or I can't have a great relationship, or I can't weigh my ideal weight. So people will make decisions Issues of lives. worthiness. Issues of worthiness are huge. Yeah, huge. Um, so th those types of things. Also, internal conflicts. As, as uh, you well know, conflicts will stop a person, an individual, or a country from really, or even the world from, you know, if we look at the major issues that are occurring in the world right now, those are values conflicts. Yes, so indeed. Yeah, so it's, and people can have those inside their own life where, the, you know, part of them wants to make money, but part of them doesn't, or part of them wants to weigh their ideal weight, and part of them would rather eat the pizza all by themselves, you know, <laughs> part of them, exactly. yeah, part of them wants to uh, go out and succeed financially, but part of them wants more freedom, and part, or part of them wants to behave differently in their relationships, and part of them doesn't, so. Well, how do you in your role when working with people, deal with these, the psychology of the parts, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. well, um, there's many different ways. I mean, depending upon the, the nature of the programs that I'm teaching or mm -hmm. how I'm doing the work, mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is I'll look for, I'll define where, where somebody truly wants to be. Where are they now and where they want to be? You yeah. know, it's like if you go on, uh, if you go on Yahoo Maps or driving directions, you got to punch two things in, where you are now and where you want to be. Uh, so we get real clear on that, and then what are the, what's impeding that person from getting there? And it could consciously, or it could be blocks unconsciously. It could be parts issues like we talked about, could be limiting decisions, could be a lack of focus in that area because they, up to this point in time, they just haven't valued relationships, or they just haven't valued health, or they haven't valued uh, uh, making uh, making uh, decent wages. Mm -hmm. um, or they, or, or so are you saying that through introducing them to the the conscious embracing of a new set of values in this case, that that helps them get to the fulfillment of the goal? That's the first step. I mean, but, uh, you, you know. What do we, you do about the subconscious? Yeah, because we could intellectualize things till the end of our days. We got to get it, God I mean, knows. we got to get it inside of us to really yeah. have the shift. And so part of the work that I do is I, because I've been working with hypnosis for so long is I'm working both uh, consciously and uh, subconsciously mm -hmm. simultaneously. Because I know that where all ultra change occurs is, the, is, is at the unconscious level. That's why we don't I feel have like I'm changing right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm getting wealthier by the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that reminded me I just, uh, of the, uh, uh, did you see the movie Love Actually? No. Oh, gosh, you got to watch it. There's a song on there with it. Uh, love is in the air. It's everywhere. I feel it in my, okay. Uh, you'll and, have to watch it. You'll have okay. to watch it. Um, <laughs> but I like the theme. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I, I'm working both consciously and unconsciously simultaneously because I know that's where all true change occurs. So, um, uh, so what I'll do is I'll be um, looking to make the shift, uh, help somebody make a shift so where it's, let, they don't have, it's not like they're having to think of trying to change their behavior. It's just who they are. Because we've all had shifts in our life where we change, maybe there's something that we used to do that we'd no longer do anymore, a behavior, because that's not who we are anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of place that I want people to get in their minds when they leave the programs that I teach so that it's not just conscious motivation. It's unconscious change where you're walking out and you're behaving differently without having to think about it consciously. That's where we get true magic. Right, right, sure, sure. There's an underlying change or shift that you don't even identify necessarily as a change. Yeah. It's actually just another part of who the person is. And I really like that as a frame. Yeah, it's a shift in consciousness uh, where it's yeah. like the, the problems that they used to have they could no longer have anymore because their consciousness has sh shifted so much. Yeah. And I get to see that all the time. And that's what motivates me to do what I do, quite frankly. I mean, I, yeah. there's, there is nothing more powerful than to get people walking up to you telling you how much that they have changed their life or how much that, you know, that they landed the job they, couldn't, that they didn't think they could land or that they um, g got the related relationship that previously they didn't feel that they could because they weren't worthy of the relationship. I mean, I've seen so many hundreds and now thousands of people all over the world that have had shifts like that that it inspires me every time, every time I go out there and I'm working with people. It's really cool. That's very cool. I mean, you could say that you're really helping to facilitate, pardon the expression, global change. Global change, yeah. Hey, you got to start with the microcosm for the macrocosm. Exactly, yeah, exactly. it's like, yeah. Uh, but global change inside each person. Inside it e might be their love life. It might be their family life. It also their 
their financial life and spiritual life. I mean, you know, Absolutely. that's a lot. Yeah, you I know? believe I believe that we have all the resources that we need to succeed inside. Sometimes, oh, yeah. most people are. It's like we got this warehouse of resources, but most people are looking in it, into the warehouse with a little pin light. Exactly. And what we're talking about is throwing on the floodlight so that we can exactly. really step up and, and, and see. Yeah, what's possible? Definitely, yeah. definitely. What are some stories of people that have come up to you at the end of seminars or whatever and uh, said, "Hey, look, this is how my life has changed." You know, I I saw you a few months ago and. Uh, this is what's happening. We, we what are just, some of your favorite stories? Well, we get them all the time. I mean, I've had people, uh, I got an email recently from somebody who said that they had lost 150 pounds. It's like 150, I mean, that's huge. And now they weigh 10. Oh, yeah, now they weigh 10. And no, <laughs> what can I do about I this, not. dear Chris? <laughs> <laughs> 150, I was like, geez. <laughs> Uh, I get Sorry, emails. No, that's all right. No, I love that. You the, set me up. The, hey, da -da -da. <laughs> I get, uh, I really do. I get, uh, let's see. I've got just somebody in the seminar last week. And, uh, she came in. She was without a job. She had no job, had no clue what she was going to do. She came into the program, and she came back so excited because about two days in, after she had learned some stuff, she said, I went out and applied it immediately. She came back, and she said, I got a job. She said, they paid me $1,000 over what I had even asked for. Um, and the most prestigious firm, she said, it was a firm more prestigious just than the one I worked with previously. She said, I couldn't have asked or dreamed for anything better. And I was like, yes, good job. So I hear things like that, and it's, that's oh, exciting. Um, God, yeah. I had a, uh, boy, this is a, a, a pretty severe one. Not, well, a woman came in, she had hepatitis B, and she didn't think that she was worthy of creating a relationship. This was in uh, uh, a foreign country. And um, I worked with the woman, and we did, we did some private work for about two and a half hours. She created a relationship just like that afterwards. And... Um, it's the most phenomenal thing. It's lasted for years now, and the guy mm. is just a, just a sweetheart. They're just a great couple, mm. um, but dissolved. The issues uh, around that dissolved because she was able to shift her mindset about who she was and and what she was deserving of in life. And yeah. and that those are you know yeah. I get I get all sorts of things that come in, um, and it's powerful. It's powerful. Uh, we get people. I get people that send me notes all the time about people that doubled, tripled, quadrupled their income. I just got one from a, a woman named Melanie in California, sent me a real nice letter saying that her clientele base quadrupled and she actually quadrupled her income within, within 90 days after attending the program. So, wow. it's cool. Do you give, that's really cool, that's really yeah. cool. I mean, that's a form of payment that money can't touch. Absolutely. Actually, right? Yeah, you know? absolutely. And of the, course, you want money in the bank. <laughs> yeah. one has nothing to do with the other. It's exactly, like, and that's you know, what, and that's part of what I, I help people to, to get because there's a lot of well-meaning, well-intentioned people out there that are that are that are doing good works. And I think that uh, you can be, do, have, and create everything that you want, and you don't have to forego one side of life to have another. Yeah, exactly. And what you're really putting forth, also, Chris, is uh, inherently is a holistical model of the universe. And what I mean by that is that I know you know. Uh, but for the sake of the viewers, right. this notion that if, like in the case of this woman with hepatitis B, once she shifts her view of herself, which you helped her do, and then she had this relationship, and then love can bubble up and imbue her life, Sure, um, her actual physical condition changes. Yeah. Now, I don't know if she were to go and get a diagnosis, it would be the same or not. It might actually be. Right. But her quality of life has shifted completely forever. because of forever. Yeah, and because what I, of what the work you helped her do. What I always tell you know? people is like in the case of relationships, your external relationship is always a reflection of your internal relationship. Got so it. it's like with yourself. It's always going to be a reflection. And when you once you get really clear inside, um, then you can then attract to that. But until you until you're clear inside, you're going to continue to attract things that are you know. I had a woman came to me in one of our programs. She said, "I keep attracting jerks into my life." You gotta wonder what you know. What's that say about her, or what she feels about herself? Yes. Because uh, some people just don't have that issue. Other uh, others That's do. That's right. And what's the difference? It's the individual themselves. Exactly. Exactly. So. so by doing the work in one domain, others get cleared up. Oh yeah. By definition. Oh That's yeah. What kind of the, the I, micro macro. Absolutely. Well, I, I'll share with you a quick story. I had a woman. She was on welfare at the time. She came in. Uh, she asked for me for a scholarship. I said, no, I can't do that because I knew it would be, it was, be kind of like handing her a fish in that case. And I wanted yes. to, so I said, I said, do yourself a favor. I said, go get the book, The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. Mm -hmm. I said, read it tonight. And I said, you can create this money. And I said, uh, call me back afterwards. And she called me back. She said, I found the money. I'm coming. 
she came to the program, she got rid of her fear, because we uh, negative emotions are to a large extent what prevent people from getting what they want. Because if you will have a goal, but you have fear about your ability to do it, or fear about what hitting that goal would mean, like making money, what would that mean in my life? Or if you've got guilt about it, like you feel it's not spiritual to make it, or if you've got uh, anger toward people who make money, all those things will prevent somebody from moving powerfully toward it. So she uh, came in, and one of the things we do is help people root those things out, and she got rid of her fear around money, and she came to me afterwards, and she had an immune deficiency disease in her body, and she said she was in pain for the past nine years or so. Mm. She said the pain disappeared like that. She called me up uh, three weeks afterwards, just shocked and amazed that the pain was still gone. Called us back three months afterwards, shocked and amazed, one year afterwards, and it continued. And she was just shocked and amazed that the pain had disappeared in her body. But we're holistic beings. Everything interrelates with everything. And exactly. I know you know that. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> and it's time for everybody to know that. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, that when people are dealing with um, covering up emotional issues or not dealing with them overtly, what happens but that they take a toll on the body. Absolutely. In fact, you can even ask yourself what is the question, what is the body? I mean, maybe the body is simply a mirroring of what's going on with our emotional lives altogether. Yeah, it's I like, totally agree. Yeah. Do you? Oh yeah, I do. I think, I think of it in that way. I mean, I look at emotions as being the means of the unconscious, that's your unconscious mind's means of communicating with you, sending messages. So negative emotions like anger or sadness or fear or guilt are bad, they're good. because. Mm. They're, they're a steering system. They tell us what to pay yeah, attention to in exactly. life. Exactly, as is pain, actually. Yeah. Well, you probably uh, you may have heard this quote before, but it's been said that we, in life we can either pay attention or we pay with pain. If we, if we fail to pay attention to our relationships, we'll pay with pain. Fail to pay exactly. attention to our health, we'll pay with pain. Exactly. Fail to pay attention to our finances, we'll pay with pain. That's right. So emotions are that steering system that tell us what to pay attention to. But sometimes what people do is they block them and they never get the message or they clog them up and they trap them in the body rather than truly listening to the message. And that's where it starts to reflect uh, uh, either through issues in our life or through physiological issues as well. So oftentimes people never find the solutions to those issues. Exactly. And that's part of what my goal is. Exactly. Well, I'm paying attention. Uh, thank I you. Will be at your seminar. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> so, great, great, great. great. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on the show. You got it. It'll absolutely. Doing and beautiful work. And we have some tickets to your entire studio exactly. audience. Exactly. want to come free. Wonderful. Great. Free. Contact us, and you can come to Chris's talks here in New York for free as his guest and as a guest of a better world. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks again. All right. Great to have it. you. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did because that's wonderful. It's great to have people on who are doing so much to educate and inspire others. So with that, I will see you all next week. Mm -hmm.